Immortality. Today, it's no longer the stuff of legends, but it's at the forefront of scientific research. But there's some deep philosophical and ethical questions about what this would mean for life and society as we know it. So let's get into it. But let's first set a foundation, and I promise I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of scientific stuff, but I think it's important that we understand what causes aging to begin with. Aging is a complex process influenced by environmental, lifestyle, and genetic factors, but scientists have identified several key mechanisms behind aging. All right, there's four of these, and I'm going to read them to you because I'm not a scientist and I haven't memorized them. And the first one is telomere shortening. Telomeres protect the ends of chromosomes, but they shorten with each cell division. When they become too short, the cell can no longer divide, leading to aging and death. Damn. The next one is oxidative stress. Free radicals, which are produced during normal cellular metabolism, can damage cells and tissues, contributing to aging. And then we have senescence. Cells can enter a state where they no longer divide, but do not die. These senescent cells accumulate over time, promoting aging and disease. And then there's genetic factors. Certain genes are associated with longevity and influence how quickly an individual ages. With these recent advances in biotechnology, is immortality really a thing? Or could it be a thing? Uh, with, with ridiculous technologies like CRISPR, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on in this video, um, what, what can't be done, I guess, is the question. Because it seems like, you know, we're reconstructing woolly mammoths and we are uh, basically making humans immortal. Uh, but... What issues can that cause? But before we get into those issues and then start to discuss CRISPR, let's talk about some of the things that the scientists discovered that uh, is actually a little bit less science fiction. So remember those telomeres we were talking about that every time they split, they shorten until they can't shorten anymore and then you just die? Um, it's very morbid, actually. Uh, but anyway, scientists have discovered that they can activate an enzyme telomerase and scientists hope to lengthen telomeres, potentially reversing cell aging. Positive. And then there's senolytics. These drugs aim to selectively destroy senescent cells, potentially delaying aging and improving health span. Senescent cells are cells that just lie dormant. They die, they don't split, but they don't go anywhere. They just stay there. So if you get a bunch of those, they can accumulate and cause disease and tumors and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the CRISPR, which we're going to talk to talk about now. So let's get into CRISPR and talk about the wacky, insane shit that this thing is capable of. So CRISPR Cas9 is a groundbreaking gene editing technology. It opened up our understanding of the control we can have over the aging process. CRISPR allows scientists to edit parts of the genome by removing, adding, or altering sections of the DNA sequence. It's kind of like copy and paste on your computer, but you're copying and pasting DNA. And CRISPR does this with ridiculous precision. So how does CRISPR work? CRISPR-Cas9 technology is adapted from the natural defense mechanisms of bacteria and archaea. These organisms use CRISPR-derived RNA in various Cas proteins. Where have I heard RNA before? Including Cas9 to foil attacks by viruses and other foreign bodies. And this works by basically chopping up and destroying the DNA of the invader. Scientists have harnessed this mechanism to target and edit genomes of higher organisms, including humans. So you can probably start to imagine the massive potential that this technology has to lengthen our lifespans and give us the possibility of immortality. But at what cost would that bring to society? And how would we tackle the existential questions? We think we would know the answer. It sounds good on the surface. Let's stay alive forever. But let's talk about some of the implications of that. What would be the value of life if it could be extended? I think there's meaning to scarcity, and I think that's why life means so much, because the chances of us being here to begin with are very, very, very slim. So the scarcity gives it meaning. I think if we didn't have that scarcity, would we still feel the same way about, about life? And <clears throat> how would that impact our daily decisions and how we go about our day-to-day -day lives? You know, that's, that's something we can start to imagine and think about, but once we're in that situation, what would be the reality? I don't know. What do you guys think? And then there's questions about the ethics of immortality. Would it be ethical to pursue this thing, knowing that we have limited resources and society would have to adapt at some point in time with uh, limited resources, population growing? So that, that equation is usually not a good one long term. Probably would take a long time for that, but that's a thing. And then 
Is this only going to be available to wealthy people? Is the technology going to be like, uh, you know, a freaking diabetes shot that's like $15,000 or whatever the hell it is? Um, who knows? That's the thing. Like, is it going to be widely available or are only select few elites going to be able to take, take advantage of this? And then there's the nature of our very identity. I think a lot of the things that define us are because of time. I know that's hard to explain, but I'm up against time for work or up against time for to get the chore done. Whatever it is, it's time. But if you knew you had infinity or you had immortality, would you still be as driven or as ambitious? Would it, would it stop innovation? Because people wouldn't be driven as hard to get things done because a lot of people are driven by time, whether they know it or not. We're up against time. So we're like, man, we got to hurry up. Why else would we hurry and get things done? <laughs> I guess is the question. So that's an interesting one. I'd be curious to see what some of your thoughts are on that one. And the other thing I was thinking about too is how would this impact the workforce? There'd be less people retiring for old age because you can just reverse your aging and stay in your job for 50 years, 70 years. I don't know. How would that work out? And then would people wanting to elevate to those roles get screwed over because no one's no one's vacating any of the roles that p people want? That'd be an interesting interesting thing to see how that plays out. Um, yeah, this is all down the road, but it's a reality. And I'm not a scientist or any of that. I just really like to nerd out on this stuff. I'm not sure how to feel about this one. I mean, the, the, the thought of immortality and reversing aging sounds great on the surface. But then if you think deeply about it, there's a lot of things that... Uh, Cross my mind that would be like, you know what, let me just live my life out naturally here and whatever is in store for me is in store for me. That's kind of how I feel about it. So let me know your thoughts. This is kind of an interesting one. I'm not getting any younger, so this stuff kind of interests me, but I don't think I would take that leap. So I really appreciate you watching. If you stuck around this long, I hope you got something out of this and uh, please subscribe, hit that like button, a lot more stuff to come and I'll talk to you later.